These days in pediatrics, we're being asked more and more, why do we give vaccines? Or confronted by people who just refuse to give any vaccines. This is very frustrating to pediatricians. People wonder why we take it so personal. In pediatrics, we actually consider this to be our biggest contribution to society. We feel we've done the most good through vaccination, more so than the development of antibiotics or any type of anticipatory guidance that we can give you. We feel that vaccines have saved the most lives of anything we do. But we're still confronted by this. And to be honest, most of these reasons are misconceptions. So we're gonna address here the reasons why people choose not to vaccinate and then why these don't hold up under close scrutiny. By far, the number one reason why I am asked about vaccines or why people choose not to vaccinate is that people believe that it causes autism. Now we have tons of scientific data that shows that there's no link between autism and vaccines. But this all came out after a study in 1998 by Andrew Wakefield that was published in the British journal Lancet, which directly linked autism with some GI disturbances and the MMR vaccine. Now, since then, this study has actually been retracted and stricken from the record. Dr. Wakefield has actually lost his license and ability to practice medicine and has since moved into the United States where he makes a living going around giving anti-vaccine talks. Dr. Wakefield's study was actually stricken from the record because it had several ethical violations as well as it was just a poorly constructed study. Now, since then, there's been numerous publications that have shown that there's no link between the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and autism. And if you think about it, it never really made sense. Birth rates have pretty much stayed stable at about a four million a year but yet the incidence of autism has gone up. If there was a direct link, it should have been completely stable. We now know that autism has some sort of genetic cause, but it's not inherited directly. So we know that there's something else going on. We see it more in families and see it even more in identical twins, but it's not 100%. So now the current thought is that we have a genetic predisposition and then some sort of trigger. Studies these days are trying to figure out what that trigger is and is there some way to prevent it? Or if the development of autism has already occurred, is there a way to turn it off? The second thing that we hear a lot is the toxic chemicals in the vaccines themselves. One of the most common one that you'll find on the internet is thimerosal, which is a mercury based preservative. In 2001, thimerosal was removed from almost all vaccines that kids get except for flu vaccine. And even the flu vaccine has a preparation that's available for kids less than five that's thimerosal free. Now this was done in 2001, removed, and there's been no change in the incidence and diagnosis of autism. And it was found to have no link. Even though it's been proven that there was no link, it still to this day re is removed from all vaccines. The second chemical that people like to bring up is aluminum. Now, aluminum is the third most common element in the world. We get it naturally through food, through some of our cooking dishes, through soda cans. But people like to think that there's some sort of link between aluminum in the vaccine and the development of autism. It's always interesting to me because if you added up all the vaccines that you get in the first six months, you get about 4.4 milligrams over that six month period of time. You get seven milligrams of aluminum from breastfeeding over that same period of time. Yet we don't hear these same people against breastfeeding. There's no real link and there's absolutely no reason to not get vaccines based on this. The third most common thing that we see is I have a religious objection. To be honest, we live in the United States. We have freedom of religion. And if you actually came to me with a true religious objection, I have no problem with that. Now, interestingly, there is only one organized religion that has a specific anti-vaccine doctrine. It's the Dutch Reformed Church, and they have been consistent. They have been against vaccines since the development of smallpox vaccines. But every other major religion has specific leaders coming out and say, regardless of how the vaccines may have been developed, that they have no particular anti-vaccine stance. 
Whenever I ask somebody what their religious objection is, they always refuse to tell me, which is odd for religion because people like to share their religious views. Usually it's just some cop-out of why they don't want to get the vaccine while I'll fill out that religious objection for their school form. Other things that we hear non-uncommonly is there's so many of them. It's just overwhelming their immune system, which again is interesting to people who have a scientific background because there are 10 times more bacterial cells in our body than there are human cells. Our body does fine taking all these onslaughts, constantly diffusing them and keeping them from causing disease. Trust me, when we get a vaccine, our body just flexes this muscle and goes on its way. Now, that's not to say that if you're already severely sick, adding one more brick on the pile couldn't make things worse. So typically, when you're really, really sick, we're gonna stay away from vaccines. This is something that we wanna do when you're well. Other reasons are, there's a government conspiracy. It's hard to argue against a government conspiracy because by its very definition, we don't know about it. But I can tell you, a physician is not controlled by the government. We have our kids' best interests at heart. A perfect example of this is the RotaShield vaccine, which came out in 1998. It was licensed and not long after it started being used, it was noted by physicians that there was an increase in a condition called intussusception. Intussusception was where the intestines actually telescoped into themselves and caused a blockage. Well, by 1999, this vaccine was actually pulled off the market because doctors were noting that this was happening. So we're not controlled by the government and we will put a stop to anything that might be harming our kids. The last thing, and probably the thing that ticks us off the most, is when people say, you're just in it for the money. If people actually realize that there's almost no money made by an actual physician's practice on vaccines, usually, the insurance companies cut that margin so slim that the only money that's actually being made by the practice is in the administration charge, which is what pays us to give the counseling, to give the needles, use the syringe, and give you the paperwork. And that is a very small amount. In fact, a lot of doctor's offices across the country have quit carrying vaccines because it's such a huge financial burden. It's the most expensive thing that I have in my office on a monthly basis. Another common reason not to vaccinate that's given to us is that these diseases, they're rare and they weren't that bad, which is always interesting because that's actually proof that the vaccine worked and that these numbers have gotten increasingly low and people are threatening to repeat history. Now, interestingly, this has already happened. There have been times where we've cut back on the vaccination rates and these diseases started reappearing the other thing is there are diseases that were rare even before the vaccines came out, but they were so deadly that if you got them, they would kill you. So our goal was, even though the number was minute, to try and prevent that from happening. Because if it's your child, it's a huge number. So those are the most common reasons that we hear why people don't want to get vaccines. Hopefully, with what I've been able to tell you, you'll look more in depth at what you find on the internet as to why people don't vaccinate and try and investigate it a little further so that you make a good educated decision as to why you wouldn't vaccinate your child.